What's going on, beautiful people all over the world? I am in New Zealand right now in Auckland, and I just got off a client call, and it was such a uh, revelation that I wanted to share it with you guys. So um, Facebook family, what's going on? Those of you listening on replay in North America, back home, my peeps back home. Um, what's up, Christina? How are you? I just uh, giving a, a, a chance for peeps to uh, to jump on board. This was totally not unplanned. I just finished the call, so I really wanted to uh, um, share this with you guys. Um, maybe this little piece will give you something. The intention of this post um, is to give you a little something that will shift your perspective, so that when you go forward and you're starting to have these certain feelings come up that I call symptoms, uh, they're not a disease or a disorder. Feelings that come up, you can actually lean into them and you can shift your perspective on them. And so hopefully this is of use to you. Um, for those of you who haven't met me before, my name is Dr. Nima Romani and I have been a chiropractor for the past 16 years and I always will be in my heart. Uh, and last year when I sold my practice, I started working part-time and I do full-time coaching, helping people going through transitional anxiety, either relationship or career limbo, feeling a disconnection from their purpose, uh, feeling broken down uh, in relationships. Um, I found that the root cause of this limbo is exactly the same thing. It's transitional anxiety. So what I do is I help people uh, reframe their perceptions and their beliefs about their condition. And for example, um, two of my clients that just come in, come to mind have been taking anti-anxiety medication for the past 20 years. One of them, one was 30 years completely off and the other one has gone down to like one quarter and has a, a, a exit strategy in place with her medical doctor. So it's really um, fulfilling for me to help either alleviate human suffering, whether it's physical through my chiropractic or it's emotional through the emotional work that I do with me and my powerfully aligned mastermind coaching team, Eilina, George, and Amanda, uh, and Alex and Jen, who are part of the team as well. Just a big shout out to those peeps in my team. I, I really, I don't give them enough credit, uh, but the truth of the matter is I can't do what I do. Uh, I, 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 got, I had the opportunity to teach them this methodology that I came up with. Uh, it's all about reframing your beliefs, shifting, changing the story around, and getting you back into your alignment and your power. Uh, Sean, basically, please tell Phil McMaster that if he wants to book me for 2018, he needs to get it done. You can handle the negotiations. Okay, I'll just be texting you back and forth, Sean. I'll let you know, I'll let Phil know. Um, by the way, just a side note, Sean, I wanted to mention, I wanted to give you a shout out as well, uh, a big shout out because you challenged me about three years ago when you put a post up on Facebook and you said, hey, we're doing the uh, freshman text. Does anyone want to come and uh, teach it? And me being a CMCC grad, never, I didn't know. I'm like, sure, I'll do it. It's an opportunity to go to Bay Area for a little bit, hang out with my man, Sean Dill. And what Sean did for me was he forced, it forced me to, uh, basically I was, I was completely over my head. It was one of those things where I just said, okay, I'm going to do it, but it's way over my head. So Sean Dill challenged me to read the freshman text. I had never cracked it open. And I talked about universal intelligence, innate intelligence, and the mental uh, realm. Uh, so is the normal complete cycle. And I'm like, what is the normal complete cycle? And so the safety pin cycle and everything. And so I got to learn about the philosophy of the profession that I entered that I had no clue because my school doesn't teach me, didn't teach me that. So I became, uh, you had a big part to play, Sean, in my uh, connection, I, my reconnection uh, with the philosophy of chiropractic. And the, the best part of all, I'm not going to lie, the best part of all was I got to take all of the stuff that I was learning and teaching and I created a rap about it. And I put your name in. I said, I'll spit philosophy. You sit back and chill. If you got any questions, you can ask my man, Sean Dill. And so now that you're not in the picture, you're not in this conference, I'm going to be saying that exact same rap, but I'm going to change. Instead of Sean Dill, guess whose name I'm going to be using? My man, Phil. Phil McMaster, who is the president of the New Zealand Chiropractic College. So I get to... <laughs> I'm changing it. Sorry, bro. Um, so I change it around too. So 
I just wanted to give you a, a moment of acknowledgement. Exactly. Please tell Phil McMaster to move Lyceum to a different date so that I can speak there every year as the keynote speaker. Now it conflicts with baby Skype's birthday. Yes. I will let him know, uh, Liam. God bless you and thank you for, for that. So uh, Liam and Sean, God, thank you guys for being here. I really wanted to get back to um, what I was sharing. So I will, I'll, I'll pass that message along with Phil. Actually, I'll just tag Phil right here. Uh, why don't somebody, somebody tag Phil McMaster there. He, he's busy right now, but be there. Uh, Liam redefines anxiety. Okay, so let's talk about anxiety. So what if you were to change your definition of anxiety, our definition of anxiety from a disorder, which is that, you know, I have clients of mine, I say, so what are the physiological symptoms? And one of the clients that I have, very, very high profile, he was kind of a big deal, he said, it feels like I have this constant feeling right in, in underneath, in the solar plexus. And so that, my friends, is anxiety. And so these are physiological signs and symptoms that when you go to your doctor, the fatal flaw that can happen is you go to your doctor and then they slap you with a diagnosis. They give you a pill. They try to convince you that it's a chemical imbalance and that you will never, uh, never, ever. Yes, I can read them that it will never, ever, ever get better because it's a medical condition that, you know, Kate runs in the family and your only recourse is to take these pills and just come back and please fire your doctor because I've discovered, I made a huge discovery that anxiety is a distraction from a lie, is a resentment towards another person, towards yourself that hasn't yet been turned around. And I just had a session with one of my clients today and been dealing with a lot of anxiety, some depression, and guess where it came from? It came from a story, an inauthentic story, a self-judgment. So I want to help you redefine anxiety to, number one, it's what I've seen. Anxiety is guilt plus shame plus abandonment plus unworthiness. I'm not good enough. I'm, so add all of these stories together be, uh, from, from past events that have happened in your life, and now you have anxiety, and that is confused with a medical condition, which, which is, it's not. It's your body's attempt to try to get you back into your alignment with your truth, to help you go back and change those stories. And so what if you redefined anxiety as a symptom, not a disorder, that actually is about resistance. What if it's a resistance to you stepping up? Because I, you know, before I get up on stage, I have this excitement. It's the same thing. It, neurologically, it looks exactly the same of anxiety. So I'm here to help people redefine what they perceive to be anxiety. And when they redefine it and they change the story, <laughs> if the, you, <laughs> God bless you, Liam. Thanks for. Thanks for tuning in. It's an honor for me to have such a big deal. Tune in. And you know how I know you're a big deal? Because you keep telling us you're a big deal, which Liam is not lacking self-esteem. And so Liam does not have this problem because he's already redefined any type of hate, any type of criticism. This is a great example. He's been under scrutiny, been called all sorts of names. He just turns it around and redefines it. Liam Schubel is a master redefiner of anything that comes his way. He brings it back into his alignment to his higher version of himself. And we can all take a page from Liam's book, which, according to him, is a smash hit book, Cast of Chiropractors. I'm just playing right now here. This is a lot of fun. So the way to do it is to completely redefine and change that story and reframe it to something that is more congruent with our higher version. And it usually has to do, <laughs> it keeps me thriving. It does. You're not doing so bad, I can tell. So I just love doing that with people. This, this client who came in and she misperceived anxiety. And in other words, she didn't have anxiety. She had self-judgment. She had self-criticism. She had self-blame about her past, which she was judging herself for drinking. For all these years and my job was to get her to see that her her actions and behaviors and stories were all strategies 
to help her get to where she wanted to go. And when she did that, I asked her, what's the impact of changing these beliefs? All of a sudden, she didn't have this self-judgment and self-criticism. She was exhausted, but she now has a completely different story. She's now taking action. And it's really about the war with the inner critic. The anxiety that you're feeling is really a war with your inner critic. Essentially a war of approval. That comes from somewhere. In her case, it was a war of approval from the story about her father. She, she took some events that happened about how she was raised, and she made it mean that she wasn't good enough or she's a loser, she wasn't to be trusted, and it was a complete fabrication of the truth. And so consider that the anxiety is a fight for a war of approval. So what I got going on here, right there, I just basically put in a link. I'm doing a live training tomorrow almost in 24 hours. And it is a free Zoom call where I teach the five shifts specifically necessary to win that war of approval with your own inner critic and to win that war of approval with other people so that other people's opinions of you, other criticisms, doesn't create anxiety so that you can lean into the resistance so that you don't have to fight this war of approval anymore. You can have power and freedom and full self-expression through criticism, leaning into the resistance, not really having to worry so much that if this person rejects me, then I can't love myself and I can't live with myself. This, my friends, is the definition of anxiety. And I know it all too well. Being the only dark kid in a white neighborhood, uh, growing up, being bullied because of it, uh, dis deciding that maybe, you know, it's not cool to be Persian growing up in a, a Iranian, growing up in, you know, the 80s, where the only evidence that we see out there uh, was, you know, toxic stuff about my culture, hating, having kind of this self-loathing, the inner critic was beginning because of the images that I would see on television and the, the opinions that I would have about myself because of it. So I got to work and it was a journey that I went through and had to go through, uh, you know, deciding to become a chiropractor in a culture that was like, huh, why don't you become a real doctor? Uh, the war of approval going into chiropractic and then okay so which branch of chiropractic if I went there I would not get approval before I started rapping and there was a certain uh, population of my peers and colleagues mainly in the Midwestern United States I don't I don't want to uh, I don't want to, uh, to, to to try to be segre segregate segregating but there was a specific population that had a problem there was heavy-duty criticism that I was under because of that and war of approval right there. So I've now reached a level in my career in my, um, in my, hey, what's up, Sheridan? It's been a while. Jody, what's going on? Um, it's been a while uh, that I've been working on chipping away at this war of approval. And now I've seen anybody who comes in with anxiety, anybody who comes in with depression, anybody who comes in with broken down relationships, not being able to be real, having affairs, these are all symptoms of an inability to win the war of approval. And tomorrow's training, I hope you join me if you're in, if you're inspired to learn. I, it's a 45 minute to an hour training where I go through how to win the war of approval. I'm gonna be sharing it from here from New Zealand. It'll be Friday afternoon here in New Zealand, Friday morning in um, Australia. It'll be Thursday evening on the East Coast, 9 p.m. Thursday at 6 p.m., a live Zoom training. We're gonna go in. We're going to get dirty. I'm going to pull back the curtain, show you exactly what it takes to win the war of approval. It's free. There is nothing for sale at all. Uh, there will be an opportunity for those people who uh, are ready to take action to do so, but I'm not selling anything directly from the, from the webinar at all. Uh, I just only want to work with people who are have been have seen the negative impacts of trying to win this war of approval. So I'm here for you. And uh, the end of that web by the end of that webinar, you'll be inspired to take action. You have a completely different perspective on what criticism means, 
when somebody is challenging you how to respond appropriately and uh, how to make that mental shift so that you don't see separation. You see nothing but absolute power in somebody else's uh, opinions of you. And it's been very powerful for me, and I'm so grateful to be able to do this as my full-time job. So I'm working right now, so that's pretty cool. What's up, Lauren? And uh, does anyone have any questions? I hope you will join me. The link is right there in the comment section. Join in. I could see people joining in. We have a maximum of 40 seats available. We have already uh, filled up 32, so there's only about eight seats remaining, and we'll see how many are left. Hope, hopefully you can join us, and uh, we'll see you at, on the other side. See you tomorrow, baby.